Hey, people! It's me, Ginny Metherill. I'm a fourth generation traditional witch. Now, somebody asked me the other day what I meant by the words traditional witch. Well, I practiced the craft that has been handed down to me through generations upon generations of people. The only reason I say I'm fourth generation is that's how far back we can remember. But I'm sure my family line of witchery stretches far beyond that. So my witchcraft is hundreds of years old. And this is why I call myself a traditional witch. We are here today with my ever popular monthly almanac series. And of course, we're talking all about March. The witchcraft for March, the spells for March, the traditions, the associations, what you should do in March. March is a transition month. It means that we're moving from the cold, dark, muddy days, thank goodness, of winter into the balmy spring summer days. And there has been a couple so far of beautiful balmy days where I've been out with the dogs and the animals, walking the countryside, picking the catkins and the daffodils and other such a beauteous abundance of flowers that I use in my craft on a daily basis. I'm so happy, I really don't like the mud. I'm bad with mud, it annoys me. That makes me cross and I don't like being cross. Although my husband might say the opposite, so sorry dear. Before I get into the daily spell casting that you might do, I just want to look at an overall picture of March because of course it is the festival month. Who knew? March has the spring equinox happening on the 20th and this means that there is a huge amount of other religions will celebrate the spring equinox as well as the pagan traditional witchcraft. For example, the Christians, they celebrate their Easter, which we all know is, you know, the celebration of triumph of good over evil. I'm sure you learned about this in school. The Hindus have the festival of Holi, which also celebrates the triumph of light over darkness and has that wonderful colour ceremony where the people go out into the streets and have piles of different colours thrown at them. It looks amazing. I really want to do that. I've never done one of those before. The Jewish religion celebrates Passover around the spring equinox, which is celebrating their forefathers' release from slavery. And it's also a celebration of, again, good over bad. So there's a sort of theme running through the religions of the world. The only one that I can't really think of is running good over bad is St. Patrick's Day celebrations, which happen on the 17th of March, which of course, the world goes mad for, especially, I believe, in New York. Now, there's another thing I'd love to go to, a St. Patrick's Day celebration, because quite frankly, it just seems about a good crack, doesn't it? But it is part of the spring equinox time. And of course, let us not forget the neo-pagan Wiccan festival for Star. So what I'm gonna do, as always, with this video, is I'm gonna run through the dates in March telling you about what to do and when and why. And so we're going to start with the first week. And for a traditional witch, the first few days of the month are those when we would celebrate the Green Man, who at this moment is in his youthful vigour and passing through the land, pulling forth the energy, making sure the flower and fauna and flora decorate the earth in the finest of raiments. So a really lovely thing to do is to celebrate this upon your altar. If you are a practicing Wiccan and, or Neo-Pagan, you may well have an altar. And if you're not like me, I still often have an altar for which I celebrate. I don't necessarily worship, but I celebrate. You can also ask the green man to come down and bless things on your altar. So here is my altar to the green man. As with all my altars, I start with incense. Candles, obviously. A small posy of spring flowers that have grown in my garden. And this is a fossilized seashell, bringing in sea aspects. More candles, I love candles. And some salt representing the earth. This is a small cloisonne owl, bringing wisdom to my altar for all involved. I also like to add moon water for that extra water element. This piece of goldstone is actually my wand, so I'm going to add it to the altar to be blessed. 
and a hagstone for extra protection. Lastly, I'm going to add my Ostara egg and this is my altar. Another tradition that witches would do in early March is to walk a labyrinth. Now a labyrinth is different from a maze in the fact that a maze you can get lost in. So you go into the maze and you get lost. Although if you keep your hand on the left hand wall at all times, you'll eventually get to the centre, secret of a maze. However, a labyrinth has an entrance goes in and it just curves round in and out, in and out, in and out. Now there are a lot of labyrinths in Scandinavian countries on the sea coast. It was thought that the Scandinavian seafarers would walk the labyrinths, taking with them the spirits of the storm and rough waters, and then leave them in the labyrinth in the middle and then escape and put to sea. However, I don't necessarily believe this. I have done a little bit of research and for all those out there, my research is done through the world of spirit and this is what I was told. So a labyrinth, this particular format, was used by two celebrants. Each celebrant would enter and then together they would walk the labyrinth. It was a ritual walk. And as they walked, they would be coiling the energy of the land around and round and in until they met each other in the middle. And in the middle, there would be a maiden, a girl on the cusp of womanhood. And they would place this energy into her. She would be the vessel for this energy and then take her out. And she would parade around the village, process about the village, giving her blessings and some of the energy that had been collected out to each household as she went, blessing their dwellings and their boats, their cows, their children, their stock, their hay, all these things. And this is like an energy generator, these labyrinths. And so that's how I understand they would be used. So it's a great way for a traditional witch to garner their energy. And the way I'd suggest you do it if you're a solitary practitioner, carrying a crystal, a quartz is always good for this. Carry the crystal in a ritualistic march around the labyrinth until its centre, calling the energy from the land into the crystal. And then you can use that crystal as a massive power boost for all your spells for the next round well, to use it up, I suppose. I'm not sure, it depends how much energy you collect into the crystal before you know how much it's run out. The first day in March that has major significance is the 13th of March, which is, of course, the new moon. Now, the new moon this particular month is in Pisces, which, although I'm not hugely into astrology myself, Pisces has an influence over the moon. So the new moon is all about new beginnings, as is Pisces. So this is a great time to start that new diet, that new job, that new hobby, that new relationship, or anything really. And because you have at the same time the green man bringing forth all this energy out of the land, it is the perfect time to start those ventures and more importantly, succeed in them. Following swiftly on from the 13th is the 14th, which is of course Mothering Sunday. So Mothering Sunday is traditional where you have celebrated all things maternal, the maternal line and your mum. And a really lovely thing to do on Mothering Sunday, which I'm sure we've all done in the past, is to give your mum a bunch of flowers. And it is because of this tradition of visiting your mother on Mothering Sunday and giving her flowers that I wanted to discuss with you the hyacinth. This is a particularly fabulous flower for March. It has a very, very magical aspect and that's why I wanted to discuss it with you. So hyacinths not only look stunning, they come in white and pink and blue and purples, but their scent is utterly heavenly. I love them. But they have a hugely great energy to them. And this energy is rejuvenating and soul pleasing. You know, it's a really great thing to have hyacinths in your house. And they love being all together like this. You know, the more the merrier in a pot. They're very crowded into their bowl. And they like that because then they can work together each plant 
to provide the energy. They have this filtration aspect to them, which means they take all the negative energy that's swirling about in the air and process it through the joyousness of this plant and get rid of it. So if you leave a hyacinth in bloom overnight in your bedroom whilst you sleep, it will take away all negative energy from you and that room. I think it's a rather special plant. Now we come to the 20th of the month, which is of course the spring equinox or the witch's sabbat of Ostara. Ostara is a time for feasting family and children. And of course, we all celebrate it with eggs. And so therefore, I thought a little egg charm spell that you can do with the young ones all by yourself or give them away to your friends and family as little presents on Ostara would be suitable. So this is my Ostara egg. So here is my eggs for Ostara. I'm going to use these rather beautiful blue eggs, which as you can see, I have already blown the yolk from. And into these, I'm going to put a bunch of flowers. A crocus flower, which will bring joy and happiness. A primrose flower for peace and restfulness. A daffodil for blessings and children. I'm going to cover the hole with a piece of blue ribbon as I tie that around the egg using a little bit of glue. And this is my Ostara egg charm. Hang these above your doorway so that all who walk through are blessed by the charm. I'm really interested to know what you would do on Ostara. Do you have a feast with your family? Or do you give presents? Do you do eggs? I'd love to know. Why don't you leave me a comment down below? And actually, it's very interesting for the rest of the community to read those comments. So please, let me know what you get up to. Ostara is celebrated everywhere. And one of the festivals that I really want to go to is the Cuculcan Festival outside Mexico City, which is an Aztec temple. And on the spring equinox, the steps cast this wonderful shadow, which you can see sliding up the steps, which looks like the serpent climbing to the top of the pyramid. I've no idea what that means, but if I was to go to Mexico City, I'm going then and I'm going to find out. The full moon in March is on the 28th of the month. And the full moon is in Libra, which is, of course, balance. It's in balance, unlike my rabbit. But the world is in balance at this point. We are waiting for the transitional period of winter going up into spring. So we've reached that, you know, seesaw moment. Therefore, I would say normally rush out and make a load of moon water. But the moon water you're going to make is very equal in all aspects. Now, I prefer my moon water with a bit more tilt to it. So I would say so uh, I'm going to make moon water, but it's not my favourite time of year for it, to be fair. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, do let me know what you're getting up to at Ostara. I'm so looking forward to hearing from you. And don't forget, my next coven meeting is coming up on the... I think it's the 8th of March. I can't remember. You have to go to patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherill and find out do come and join us because it's really good fun and we'll do a couple of rituals to do with Ostara. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, do give me a subscribe and a like and I'll see you in my next one.